you can't hear each other. <laughs> yes, I do. I am not deafened. Okay, I hear a, a buzz. Let me reconnect real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> First up on the chop block here from two arc, it's going to be that uh, Muradin. They're not going to allow King of Blades Alpha to pick that up here for the Sky Temple. Uh, I would highly suspect King of Blades Alpha is just going to ban up Taronda, and there she is. Nothing here for the queen of everything else. Where did you go? Shane was here, and now he's not. Shane? All right, let's try this again. Shane! Shane. Hello. Shane. Gucci. Still can't hear you. Oh, dear God. <sighs> Why, Gooch? Why? Maybe Skype? Why does Gucci hate me, guys? Why? Alright, no more music. Hello. That is that wonderful, sultry voice. <laughs> you suck so much. <laughs> that I've been waiting on. Alright, let's talk about the draft, because we've thoroughly embarrassed ourselves in our technical prowess. Let's. All right. So, Meriden into Taronda Band. They were out. Not a problem. Zagara into Kael'thas. And now an Uther. Sounds pretty standard to me, sir. It does. Let me uh, bring it up, and then I will continue to commentate on it. There we go. Battleground of Sky Temple. I love me some Sky Temple. All right. So, the next bands, Jane and Thrall. There could be uh, I, I was Actually, Murdered was banned out there. I was about to say the Murdered band. I just got my eyes on the draft here. Guys, give me mm -hmm. a moment to, to to absorb all of it and see what's going on here. So, what does uh, Two Arc need that Kings of Blade Alpha should ban out here? They could ban out uh, ETC if they so desire, if they don't want to deal with an ETC. But uh, I don't think uh, – I was going to say, the next words that are about to come out of my mouth was a Sonya. I like the Sonya ban. And then Two Arc banning out Abathur, I guess uh, – Kings of Blade is one of those teams who doesn't mind running Abathur. Generally, when we see an Abathur, it's on Cursed Hollow. That's like Abathur's, uh, when, we, when we see him play, it's that battleground. But obviously, Sky Temple, he uh, has some, a lot of value on this battleground as well. Tuark not wanting to deal with that split push, split pressure. And Kings of Blade picking up the global presence of a Falstad and ETC as well. I like those two pickups, Sean. Well, I'm a little surprised the ETC got right through the band draft, but uh, Tuark said nuts to Abathur instead. So now they're going to have to deal with that party rock and mosher. But still, I mean, we have a lot of tools here from Tuark to kind of deal with it. The gust and the false dead and the global presence, I think, is absolutely fantastic here yep. uh, for them as well. I mean, if we do actually pick up that ETC, gusting an ETC, Mosh, not exactly synergistic. Actually, neither did with the Sunder. If you Sunder and yep. uh, gust in the same direction, could be rather disastrous. But King of Blades Alpha have been around a while. They know what they're doing. So what can Two Arc do here? Looks like they're going to take it, Jimmy. They still need a tank. Murden's out. ETC is out. So Diablo or Johanna are, are probably going to be up. And there it is. It's going to be the Johanna. Lots of Diablo Warriors today, guys. <laughs> Two Arc picking up the Johanna. Obviously, great wave clear, great lane presence. And uh, it, using that Iron Skin will be able to negate those he the heavy initiation of both the ETC and the Thrall. And there it is, Lieutenant Morales, who is a hero we see picked up. If, uh, if, if the enemy team doesn't have a lot of initiation or dive, Morales can thrive. Right, and she has a great front line to protect her as well. ETC is great at zoning out, one of the best. Uh, Thrall, obviously, he just initiates and just keeps people off of the back line with his sundering and all his snares and whatnot. So, I like this Lieutenant Morales pickup. Tuark doesn't have a lot of initiation, a lot of dive, they don't have a Thrall, they don't have a Murden. Johanna can, if she gets if she finds that Morales out of position, can toss out a Blessed Shield. But again, there's enough peel coming up from Kings of Blade Alpha that I think this Morales pickup is really going to thrive. It's a great pick right now. She's uh, going to do really, really well. Uh, and as far as Stim Pack 
goes, if they want to go with that stim, uh, you know, Medivac is certainly the less seen heroic of the two, but it is Sky Temple, so there's a possibility for it. If we are going to see it, it would be on a battleground like this where mobility is king. But I really want to see that stim either on the Falstad or the Thrall. It works really, really well on them. So two good options from that stim pack coming out from Morales. Yeah, I would actually expect to see it more on the Falstad than anything with the... Uh... Well, there's two ways to go with the auto attack build these days on for Frozen X, who is going to be playing the false set, uh this round. You can actually go into Flow Rider and the Airy Winds at level 16, or you can just kind of go into more of the heavy hammer utility with the power throw uh, and the uh, stun at the level 16 there as well. Both very viable options, and both will actually accent that auto attack build very nicely. So I would totally expect Dark Chimera here to be doing that stim on the false set. Yep. So on the flip side, Johanna. Uh, with actually really good timing on her trait, could actually defeat the ETC Mosh very easily. Rainer can just yep. get him out of that. Zagara, Uther, Kael'thas, there's a lot of tools. So this begs the question, with Heroes Rising, we saw Tempo Storm pick yeah. up that uh, split pushing pressure. And with the false tet on that as well, their global advantage could be pretty handy here. Yeah, I actually would really like to see Stage Dive here. It's something that you can't just kind of haphazardly throw uh, into your strategy unless you've practiced it. you got to be pretty smart with it. But obviously, if uh, if it's something they've practiced, then I would love to see it here. It would just It's so good on this battleground. They can really abuse the temples, split push, gaining experience advantage, and just keep the lanes pushed in constantly. But guys, let's introduce these teams once again to our gaming left side of your mouth in blue. We're going to have Chef on Uther, LZ Gamer on the Rainer, Trader on the Kel'Thas, Sunshine playing the Johanna, and rounding it out is going to be Crone on the Zagara. And on the flip side, these guys, you saw them at Heroes Rising. They've been on the up and up. Collusion, Dark Chimera, Tomster talking trees, and Frozen X, all by his lonesome up in the top, does not want to team fight. Actually, I think he's dancing in that bush. <laughs> uh, he is. The flashy, the flashiness. So I love talking about this 1v1 matchup, Zagara versus Thrall. Uh, again, Thrall, who's made a huge surge onto the scene after the scaling changes. People started to realize what he's really, really good at, and they realize that he's actually really good in lane, and he he can deal with a Zagara. Zagara, as, well, as long as she plays it correctly, Chrome plays that matchup correctly, she should be able to still uh, have the advantage in this lineup, but Thrall actually does a phenomenal job at dealing with it, though. Can clean up the waves with the chain lightning, can keep him in the uh, in the waves, especially level 4. He gets the Rolling Thunder at level 1 and the increased chain lightning procs at level 2. He gets all the Frost with resilience heals in the world. He can stay in the lane, deal with that boss, and it just is a very, very good matchup against that Zagara. One of the best in the game right now. Now well, Sunshine's going to take a little bit of poke. Throws out that Iron Skin a little bit too late. As you said, Tomster, he's not going to be, you know, winning that lane, but he will be able to deal with it uh, adequately enough. And can they actually deal with this LC Gamer adequately oh. enough? So very close. Oh. Talking Trees has no pierce with that Frostbolt, so no chance. Already threw out that Blizzard there as well. So skin of his teeth, LZ. It's not the end of the world because they got the Adrenaline Rush. LZ Gamer is not going to be as gutsy as he might have been. But still, uh, missing a kill is definitely uh, something you never really want to do. And anytime you see that, give me more. Uh, obviously, it saved his life right there, but that is that does decrease the his damage in the late game. But even without season marksman, his Rainer skills very very well in the late game. That's one of the reasons he's picked up over here in the mid shrine. Though Sheth is in a lot of trouble. ETC doing a good job at zoning him out, but he's going to get pressured away now. Sunshine was able to keep the Uther alive, and right now we see that uh, King of Blades is maintaining control over this mid shrine. We might see a re-engage from two arc here. Sunshine hit the fountain. He's back here. This is a three v three. Zagara and Thrall. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, are still duking it out. Rainer is left to his own devices up in the top lane. So this is a pretty even exchange as far as experience goes. And right now, we do see Kings of Blade has firm control over this mid shrine. But now we see Kael'thas rotating up to the top lane to make sure Rainer is able to pick up that shrine. And there is all the energy uh, for the mid shrine gone. So well done by Kings of Blade. LZ! Alpha, pretty much <laughs> oh my lord, once again, LZ Gamer. Holy cow, he's I so am, low. I am super disappointed that King of Blades Alpha, they're going to go here for Sheth again, uh, were, did not even go to check that point. Not even yep. once did this false dead decide to go up there. And it looks like we're going to have a pause. Uh, I'm actually rather disappointed that they didn't do that. I am, I am phenomenally actually disappointed. But that aside... Um, Let's take a quick look at some of these talents. Uh, you know, yeah. we did actually trade out the forts, no problem. I can't see levels with that pause in the middle. 
Um, all right, fine. Thrall, ride the lightning, rolling thunder, so that will keep him in that uh, bottom lane up against Crone. Uh, fairly easy peasy. As you said, we did have a give me more from the Rainer. We, it's not a seasoned marksman. Yep. Uh, so that actually, as you said, brought him out to just slightly a uh, victory as he didn't go down. Focused attack, though, is uh, pretty standard for him. Level 7, very likely to see the inspire movement speed from him. And uh, Rolling Stone and Double Neck Guitar. I feel like we just never see Prog Rock anymore from an ETC. Yeah. I mean, that level 13 talent he picks up, instead of groupies, the, the damage mitigation with his power slide is such an incredibly strong talent. And it, the initiation that he already had, great, his great initiation that he already had, it's complimented that he can't get really bursted down in a mosh pit or anything like that. Because even if you can't interrupt the mosh pit, the other thing you can do is just burst him down. And obviously with that level 13 talent synergizing with the level 1 and level 4 talents, just a lot of warrior players favor that a little bit more than the s increased sustain that groupies gives you. And yep. uh, I would have liked to have seen it. It would have come from real well, but it's not the case. Sunshine under a lot of pressure here in the bottom lane. Protective shield being thrown out. Is there an iron skin right now? Don't know if it's on cooldown right now. If so, Sunshine's being very, very patient with that. We do see that the Siege Jokers were picked up in a full rotation down here to the bottom lane. With these Siege Jokers, they want to get these structures down. And one of the things about Sky Temple is the more you're able to push in the structures, the more valuable your objectives are going to be the more valuable and more closer you get to the more vital structures, right? The inner towers, the keeps, and ultimately the core. So I like that they're putting a lot of pressure into this. That means if they're able to pick up this next temple in the bottom lane, it's going to immediately start taking shots on that fort. All right, so, I mean, they got a little bit of damage. Now they're looking for Traitor, and, well, that should actually be a very dead Kel'thas. Ooh, yeah, easy day. Yeah, Sheth just kind of coming in a little bit too late to that one. Uh, one of my personal favorite strategies on this one is if you can take out that early uh, gate sometime before that temple spawn, which is happening now, prioritize taking out that well. If you can take out the well mm -hmm. in this bottom lane up against red or blue on the flip side, either way, you take out the well from the enemy team, they're going to have a heck of a time if they're not very far ahead trying to fight yep. you on that point. So here's that shrine coming, and we see Zagara. The creep spread is pretty good. Thrall's done, Tomster's done a decent job at at least keeping the creep on uh, to our side of the map, but nonetheless, I mean, that whole area is all gooped up. They have a lot of vision on their side of the map. They'll be able to see any aggressive rotations or anything like that. Tuark is in great position. Zagara already set up on the, that uh, temple, and the fort's starting to take a lot of damage here. I mean, what's the play? I, I guess the play here for Kings of Alpha is they're forfeiting this temple, judging by the fact that they were keeping the ETC and Jaina a little bit longer, and obviously, obviously false that is now starting to rotate down, so now we see the collapse of Kings of Alpha down here towards the shrine, but already, I mean, more than half of the energy of the temple is expected Expended right here. Yep. So the sport's going to be going down here. The experience still very even. We see Collusion pushing himself forward, looking to maybe pick up the last couple of shots of this temple. Tuark calling back a little bit. Tuark not wanting to commit. They're worried about the re-engagement. Sunshine now going forward. Tomster is in a little bit of a corner. Sunshine's by himself right now, but so is Collusion. This is a little bit of a scrappy team fight. LZ Gamer in a lot of trouble. The Give Me More can only do so much, but when you have a Thrall punching in the face, it's going to get you punished right there. So a 1v1 exchange thus far. ETC for the Rainer. Iron Skin on cooldown. Sunshine's got to be careful. They're focusing down the Morales, she should be going down here. They are able to get it. False stats stunned up. They do get with her as well. This is a very even exchange right now. Three for two. And Kings of Alpha looks like they're going to be coming out ahead here. The Thrall was the big mitigating factor there. Secure the takedown on a cigar. But no, they get the takedown. Oh, that's actually five team members down for two arc right there. Uh, a, a very long, scrappy team fight. Heroics just came online. I don't think anyone had mana to use him, though. But uh, so the temple favoring at two arc, but obviously that team fight widely favoring Kings of Alpha right there. And with that, they're going to push down this bottom lane, trying to get some damage done and carry that momentum from here on out. Well, I mean, hey, they got the temple, as you said, but paying five for it, I'm not entirely too sure that was the best of yeah. trades because now we have this wild experience swing. We went from, you know, a, or more or less on the same level to about... Uh, you know, a little just over a uh, half a level difference between these teams. And again, like with this race now to 13, you're, it's all about having that talent advantage over your opponents for some of these catches. And speaking of a catch, they're looking for Dark Chimera. And I'm not entirely too sure with the body blocks and all that. Crone coming into it as well. She's down for the, the shield count. glare. The shield glare securing the takedown right there. There's a Maw on the Thrall. Is there any follow up here though? I mean, Blessed Shield is on. There it is right there. Oh, Gene is so very low. Gonna get taken out by LZ Gamer. Collusion is gonna have the power slide out of there. Ooh, Hyperion being used, goody. and this is just gonna push this in right here, guys. And again, the more you're able to push down these structures, the more valuable your temples are gonna be. That's gonna be the second quarter of the match going down here on the heels of those two takedowns. Well done. That Maw, I didn't think that Maw, well, there's gonna be any follow up there because it was right on the cusp of the gate there, but the Blessed Shield being on <laughs> Sunshine. We got the stun. Here comes the stage dive. Gotta be careful here. A re engagement on the kill he gets taken out. Well done.
to re-engage on top of two arc. They punished that fort going down. But right now, oh, are we gonna see a nah, gust? I thought we didn't get in front of him. Gust there from Frozen. It wasn't gonna happen. Yeah, you need to get in front of the Rainer in order to make that happen. I was about to say, what did Collusion take? And then he went all the way bottom lane and he still hadn't actually picked that ultimate. It's like where's where was the mod? <laughs> he, so he literally just picked it in order to get make that happen and well all right a good catch on to lz but it's not going to be enough uh, for a kill i don't even think we have the pressure here to take down this fort no we don't sunshine now it's going to try to set things up oh there's a sundering it looks that kind of was a miscommunication there i mean it looked like kings of alpha was actually falling back and trying to disengage and then he saw a sundering I, I guess the sundering was more of a disengage to try to get themselves away more i would have liked whiff. to see the mighty gust instead <laughs> a little bit of a shorter cooldown and and now without that sundering online for another 50 seconds that big initiation tool not available uh, and this is a key time that they need it they're really not going to be able to take a, a very favorable team fight with that sundering being on cooldown yeah. with the temple right here in mid lane but sundering has a 70 second cooldown gust only has 40. So you should yeah. never trade that out. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of a note there for you guys at home. Now, we don't have a mosh pit, and Tuark knows that. So they, yeah. I mean, granted, you don't want to be gr uh, clumped up here anyways. A good gust into a sundering talking trees will tear you apart. But at the same time, like, it, the danger of having that mosh into a really bad positioning uh, is not there from these guys. So you're going to see a big fight here. Can they actually catch down? No, nope, it's going to be the shield. Oh man, their sunshine's under a lot of focus. He throws out the blessed shield and definitely before he goes down. There's the mighty gust right there. A beautiful mighty gust. They put Chrono up against the ropes. Chrono's gonna go down. Cloudline shows in a terrible position right now. But they turn around, they get the takedown on the Jaina. Two for two exchange. Thus far, Sundering is back online. But Thrall, will he be able to use it here? Elzy Gamer's gotta be careful. He might have to use a Sundering just to secure his getaway. The gravity lapse almost getting Tomster right there. If that gravity lapse hit him, that probably would have been him taken out there. So a three for two, two arc were able to weather the storm right there. Well done. The mighty gust was actually a beautiful. Beautifully well done, Mighty Gus, but the follow-up wasn't there. Two arc getting themselves the temple, and right now they have a small experience advantage, but this is definitely the most even game we've seen thus far, Sean. Yeah, when your medic gets really that heavily pressured and there's uh, very little peel for it, you're not really going to be getting that sustained game going. You saw Dark Chimera at the very end of that, uh, pretty much uh, you know, worse for wear. Tomster, by the end, sure, he survived and he was able to help secure uh, you know, enough kills. The level uh, swing has really gone over to two arc now, 14 and a half compared to the 14 or so, but we don't really seem to have the presence from Tuark in order to take this tempo yet. Tomster is going to be straddling that line, but we do have a stage dive. That's why there's an ETC top. You're going to be looking for his engage, yep. probably on top of a Sundering. Divine Shield down for 10 seconds, and that's really a necessary uh, heroic that Tuark needs to take a team fight well. But it's going to be back up here. They're not engaging. They're waiting for that. And to ETC, he's split pushing well. He's getting them as much damage done as he can. But he can't be delayed too long, because if his team gets... There it is. LZ Gamer is going to immediately back up. The power slide on LZ Gamer. He's going to be the focus. Protective Shield. And now they're turning around. Sunshine, he flanked from the south. He throws up the Blessed Shield. Jaina and Morales out of the equation. Collusions very successful to get taken out here. He does go down. That was so well done. Traders taking damage. He's going to get the false set, though. He might actually be able to stay alive. No, he does get taken out. But still, this is a favorable tomb fight for two arc right now they're gonna get the thrall as well so a four for one the stage dive was okay but i felt like it was just very easily predictable there he didn't really put it uh, using stage dive as a primary initi initiation tool i really don't like i rather would have seen a sundering thrall goes in and then behind that you stage dive into the back line using it as a primary initiation tool obviously gives two arc enough time to recognize what's going on they position themselves accordingly they were able to weather the initiation and just pretty much took the team fight from there on out Level 16, now advantage coming in to Ark with a huge presence here on the map. AV to take down that boss, pretty easy peasy. And with that talent advantage as well, you're not going to be seeing a lot of aggression coming out here from the King of Blades Alpha. They are pretty much relegated to sitting on their hind legs and soaking until they can get that 16 advantage. Uh, so let's take a little bit of time here to look at what Rainer ended up doing. Relentless leader at the 13 mark, mm -hmm. I find is a little strange because there's no mosh pit. Usually you would see that as a counter to the mosh pits. But yeah. uh, with so much, you know, soft CC, that's, um, that will actually trigger quite a bit. It is every five seconds. So this Rainer yeah. has gone very, very defensive. Give me more. And now Relentless Leader, he is a very safe Rainer. Uh, and yep. it has showed. I mean, LZ Gamer has really been able to put forth that effort. No Giant Killer and no Season Marksman be still able to do the damage, guys. So take note of that. So ETC at level 13, making me put my foot in my mouth, actually is picking up the groupies without the uh, increased healing at level one. So he is going with that sustain, and I actually don't mind that pickup because Groupies has a pretty small AoE. It only plays very well if you have another melee with you, and obviously that would be the Thrall. So I don't mind it here. I, I would, I, 
I still think that damage mitigation will be a little bit better as you've seen Collusion has been focused down a handful of times here and has gone down relatively early in these team fights. Ooh. Looking for initiation. Sunshine's pretty low. There's a Sundering, a great Sundering. Pushes them all back, and this is huge for Kings of Blades right now. Wonderful initiation. Three takedowns right off the bat, and they smell the blood in the water. They want to get Chef here as well. Is there any sort of route? We see the aggressive fly forward from Frozen, <laughs> and that should not. Another takedown right there. Crone's taking yeah, no. gets the snare from the Hammer Ring, and this is going to be a full five man team white. Four Kings of Blade, wonderfully done right there. The That was just well done across the board. And all of a sudden, two arc against the ropes right now. The temples are going to activate in five seconds. Kings of Blades, they have themselves all the room in the world to flow across this map, get lanes pushed in, and carry the momentum into the race for level 20. Whew. Five man pickup, it couldn't have come at a better time because of that temple spawn. And we still actually have that stage dive as well. Even if two are, you know, magically all resurrect and start aggressing, team, uh, ETC can be there in a flash. Unfortunately, there's no boss, no real other objectives for these guys to take. So they're going to be collapsing down here. You have a medic, make use of it. Tom Sir Frozen and Dark Chimera yep. here will be able to clean up this fort. Easy peasy. And with the help of that. Uh, those uh, lasers from the temple, these last few shots will land some keep tower damage, assuming Collusion actually doesn't go down. He is about half, and LZ's coming in hot. Oh. He has stage dive, but yeah, they're going to use matter. the Blessed Shield to commit that. I, I think he Collusion must have just felt pretty safe because he had the stage dive, but he was not expecting the CC chain right there, so a little bit of a sloppy play on the shoulders of a great initiation coming out from him, but they still got most of the juice from that temple, so it's still an okay exchange. Just no ETC, no frontliner for 30 seconds. This means two arc, they could potentially maybe try to push down this keep. Hyperion is available, actually, so I, I think if they play this right, they actually might be able to get this keep. Mule, of course, being highly valuable on this map, uh, that's what they're going to do. Yeah, well, here comes the push from two arc right now. And that push, I mean, Mule is fantastic. Thompson's going to try to do it again, though. Yeah, they got to be careful here. There's an initiation. A Ma on the Jaina. And now Divine, or I'm sorry, the Thrall gets picked off. And the Mighty Gust, a couple of, uh, not even a couple seconds, just about a half a second too late. If that Mighty Gust was there right after that Ma, I think Thrall might have been able to stay alive there. But again, they don't have ETC in that front line. They didn't have the zoning protection that they needed. So not only do they get themselves another takedown, but more importantly, they get that keep in the top lane. And they get themselves closer to that point where the Temples start nailing on that court. Well, I mean, hey, fool me once, shame on you, but fool me twice, Tuarek's not going to be having any of that. They easily yep. take down the Thrall. It's a really good idea, but unfortunately now, I mean, that was a lot of ultimates. Basically everything except the stage dive. The, uh, ETC is back and he's with it. You can see him split pushing there into the top. I'm a little surprised he took for the imposing presence instead of the uh, echo pedal. The echo pedal would be yeah. great for the split push, but he really wants to try to curb the damage here from the Johanna, from the Rainer, from the Zagara, all, you know, do depend upon the those auto attacks look at that battle momentum sitting there from our Johanna for instance but because you know he doesn't have that his split push is a little weaker and with no mosh I mean they had one good shot there with the thrall but trying to do it again is going to be tricky yeah. So the next temple phase, level 20 Stormshear Talents online for two arc. This is a great position for them. They picked up the boss in the bottom lane. This is going to force the response out of King of Blades Alpha to come down here. They pretty much are they have to deal with this push right now or else they're their bottom keep is going to be under siege. So they're doing a good job. Again, they are taking advantage of their global mobility. And we see Tuark has consolidated at the mid-temple right now in good position. Sunshine is in this bush. And if Collusion isn't careful here, he can get stun-locked out. He's got to be careful. He finds Sunshine in the bush right now. But Johanna stunned up. Iron Skin on cooldown. And they actually might be able to take the Johanna down with Iron Skin being utilized so very quickly. They could have punished that, but nope. They don't want to go in there because LZ Gamer is just sitting there waiting for him. And now this is a full 5v5 still. The Sunshine's on the back line. They have to wait for Iron Skin to get uh, brought back up here. Heal up Sunshine, then try to re-engage from there. Level 20 is online for both of these teams right now. So they're both trying to find an opportunity. Is the Sundering available right now? The Sundering is available. So Tomster's kind of looking for a flank. Crone is doing a lot of damage to that Jaina. Taking a lot of, bit of, uh, a lot of damage there, but he's going to get healed up by the Morales. Just a lot of posturing right now. Neither of these teams want to commit. They're just trying to battle over this temple right now. And it looks like that Kings of Alpha, or Kings of Blade Alpha has actually bossed Tuark off of the uh, shrine. There are a lot of patience displayed by both of these teams. There's a couple opportunities where we could have seen a Maw engagement. We could have seen a Sundering engagement. But all of them are being very, very patient and just trying to wait out for the perfect opportunity to use the, utilize those heroics. Well, there goes that first temple. One keep down for uh, to arc zero keeps to the name of King of Blades Alpha yet. But level 20s are here. Uh, quite a few blinks, actually, I see. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the Bolt of the Storms. And, oof, I mean, look at this. Uh, already, this, everybody is reeling to uh, try to get that positioning here for this bottom lane. 20 is here. This is a good time 
to look for that initiation there with that stage dive, especially with so many bolts out there. But again, no mosh really does kind of take a lot of the wind out of the sails here. King of Blades Alpha, they got to make something else happen. They still got the gust. They still got the sundering. In fact, every heroic is here except that Hyperion. Collusion, he's going in there. Sunshine and Collusion trying to fill each other out. Phoenix going down. Just more of a zoning Phoenix than anything else. Tuark on the aggressive. They're starting to move forward, and this looks like a moment they're looking to initiate here. Frozen can barrel roll away across that gap. There should be all right. A huge blizzard right there. There's a Sunder as well. They're actually focusing on Sunshine. The Divine Shield is going down on the him. He's focusing down the Morales. Dyke Tamir in a lot of trouble as well. Jane is low too, but false that separated. He's going to barrel roll across that gap, as I mentioned. Sunshine, the, it does actually go down. The indestructible wears away. Oh man, another beautiful full blizzard right there. Everyone rooted up on the side of Tuark, and this is looking great for King of Blades Alpha right now. They're going to get this temple, get the team fight, and off the back of this, they can get a boss, they can push down a keep. The map is theirs to just completely paint red right now, and very well done by them. The Sundering was on point, and Sunshine just simply overextended. He, I guess the Divine Shield overlapped on top of the Iron Skin, a miscommunication of the abilities right there from Tuark, and it gets punished. The, it, the Divine Shield was questionable at uh, because we have indestructible on yep. Johanna right so they divine shielded her when she got low there was no heals because then they had to split focus they actually tried to put focus on top of frozen X who was able to defeat a lot of that with not only the gust but then a barrel roll here comes that boss and the marching duo for the bottom lane as well that is a guaranteed dead keep and that should put us now firmly in the lead for King of Blades Alpha but the split focus didn't do any wonders the shield definitely going out a little bit too early there on Johanna once she was done out of that then popped her indestructible then she was too far forward and speaking of forward Collusion really trying to make this happen with that stage dive. Well, my game just crashed on. I Take see that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the stage dive in, and uh, we have a pause, please. Maybe not just you uh, crashing the game. I can't talk to them back, so I hope they're not pausing for you. Uh, but the keep yeah. is down. We have the boss at something like 90% health, going straight to core. We're gonna have the uh, stone bros in the back throwing down them boulders. And this is this is do or die time. If two art cannot defend this, this is going to be them out of the tournament. Rejoining the match right now here, Sean. Just a little bit more solo casting. I'll be there in a moment. Oh yeah, no problem. Shane said game crashed. Go on. I don't know who dark. Who's dark? Dark Chimera is lagging. Yeah, no, Sheth actually picked it up. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we have our heroics basically back. The Hyperion was used in that last fight, so it's down here for the count. We have Gust, we have Stim, we have Water Elemental and Sundering, and, of course, we did just use that stage dive. So the heroic game is going to go over to King of Blades Alpha. They got the momentum. They got a big boss. If this isn't game, it's at least going to be a heck of a lot of core damage out there. And, well, we do have that Divine Shield coming back in. Is Indestructible back up? Can't actually tell with this overlay. I'm going to bet no. But we're going to have to see what they can do with this one. The boss takes out the tower. The Stone Bros are here as well. Sunshine's going to be trying to group them up into the mid. Fortunately, again, I don't think that Indestructible is up, and it's not. She just goes down completely focused. No Divine Shield from Seth on the other side of the core. He's going to drop. No shield still. He does have the Redemption, but the boss is on core. It's down under half Collusion and crew. We even got the positioning from Frozen X if he wanted to gust. It doesn't matter. He just goes right through it. The Stim Drone seals the deal, and that's it. Two arc are out. King of Blades Alpha will move on into the finals, where I believe I've been told... Those are going to be the best of threes. Very back and forth kind of game, Mr. Gucci. It was. I, I joined the game right as uh, right as we get to, got to see the end there. Nothing I could do about that. Game just literally crashed and gave me the little send survey to Blizzard thing about it. And I sent them that survey. <laughs> I did indeed. Well, so yeah, fi survey. finally, that was definitely the most even, <laughs> the most even <laughs> match of the game. Uh, and very well done. I mean, we saw the initiations were, uh, were on point from Tomster. Excuse me. Uh, and it's just a, a good job across the across the board. I'm, I'm looking forward to a, a finally a best of three series, a little bit more of a, a longer series for these teams, and they can maybe whip out some pocket strategies and get themselves uh, the uh, the victor here. Well, speaking um, of I victors, actually, Mr. Gucci, yeah. the toilets got flushed, and Gale Force Esports bring forth a cleansing wind and come into the finals Stop. here for the King of Blades Alpha. Uh, I've been told they're actually not the King of Blades Alpha anymore. Somebody, uh, Stormlords in chat was saying that they rebranded. Oh. I don't know. I mean, I just take my name from the brackets. If they signed up with that name, that's the name I'm going to use. So um, apparently they're just King of Blade now. Just King of Blade. Singular. Well, I mean, we can confirm, but if that is the case, we sh I'll update the UI for the next round. But I'm just keeping you in the loop.
I mean, how many 